I'm going to explain now how the Tiny TV board works. This is the separate board from the CRT driver board that I built. Uh, the CRT driver board is the product of Eric Schleffer. In my board, video comes in a video input jack and is received into a 75 ohm terminating resistor which is quite normal in proper video uh, design. I AC couple from that load resistor the video signal over to an op amp configured in a standard times one gain configuration. Because of crossing the capacitor uh, and going into this FET input of this op amp this line has lost its uh, DC reference so I establish an artificial DC reference uh, by tying uh, two 100k ohm resistors between the plus and minus 5 volt rail placing this line at approximately 0 volts DC and this holds the, the entire video waveform within the uh, operating range of, of this amplifier. Coming out of the first amplifier, the video is exactly the same level as it went in. It goes next to an amplifier which has a gain of five times and basically takes one volt peak-to-peak -peak video, boosts it to five volts peak-to-peak, -peak, which is a requirement of Eric's uh, CRT controller board, and once again, I AC couple, or DC block, whichever you prefer, this video signal and send it over to Eric's board. This is the uh, signal that drives the brightness on the CRT as it's scanning. Next, I take the times one video down into a national semiconductor LM1881 sync separator IC. This is a wonderful little part that does a lot of work of a lot of parts. Uh, the video comes down into a simple RC filter which attenuates the chroma signal which uh, in color video can extend into the sync region causing this part to false trigger uh, the symptom of this in circuits that use it is a, a hop in the vertical sink. It will false trigger and the picture will hop up and down by one line. It kind of shivers. So this little simple filter knocks the uh, chroma down without uh, affecting the uh, lower frequency sink signals very much. Again, AC coupled into the LM1881 which has an internal clamp to clamp the video to a reference level so that it can slice the sync pulses and then there's a series of internal timers that sort the sync pulses out and some general logic which uh, does all the work for us and in the end result the chip outputs four separated sync signals or five uh, four signals and I only use two of them I'm interested in the vertical sync and the composite sync both uh, uh, th these uh, sync pulses are now sent over uh, to the scanning circuits. But first, a sync pulse, if you see this little, little guy right here, is represented in this respect. It pulses negative. And the uh, circuit that I used in order to operate needs the pulse to be positive. So I pass this negative pulse through an inverting circuit, which converts it to a positive going pulse, and everything is happy. This circuit consists of three parts. There is a capacitor which charges up and forms our scanning ramp voltage. It is charged by this circuit which is a constant current source. I won't go into the theory of it but this configuration of two little transistors taking 12 volts down through them will produce a constant current of just under 2 milliamps, something like 1.96 milliamps. This field effect transistor, the 2N7002, 
is acting just exactly like a switch. It can be off or on between this pin and this pin, which happens to be straight across the capacitor. When the pulse pulses on, it turns on the FET switch, which shorts out the capacitor and holds it shorted out until the pulse goes down again. When the pulse releases, current begins to flow through the capacitor and this point charges in a ramp voltage. It's that simple. And then the, it charges until the next pulse or until the ramp reaches um, well, it left on its own, it would charge all the way to this 12 volts. We don't want that to happen. Eric's board wouldn't like that. So I placed a diode here that is in reverse bias. The top end is tied to the plus 5 volt power supply. So that if, this, if these pulses stop, like if you unplug the video, this would continue to charge until it reaches 0.6 volts, the voltage drop of the diode, higher than 5 volts so when this point reached 5.6 volts it would effectively clamp there and stop. This prevents 12 volts from going into Eric's circuits and uh, causing damage. This op amp is just a, a TL082 general purpose little guy and its job is to isolate this capacitor from the and these transistors from the outside world in case of any kind of a fault outside coming back in. I, this would be a sacrificial part. And that's how these uh, tiny TV board does its thing. I would like to add one other uh, comment about my diagram. In this diagram I only show one of two scanning circuits. This scanning circuit that is shown is the horizontal scanning circuit. It has a capacitor value of 22 nanofarads. With that value and the constant current of approximately 2 milliamps, it charges the capacitor from 0 to 5 volts in approximately 50 and a half microseconds, which is the length of the uh, active portion of the scan line. For the vertical circuit, everything is identical except that it is driven by the vertical sync pin of the 1881 and this capacitor value is 6.8 microfarads and it does exactly the same thing only it takes much longer. It takes 262 and a half times longer than the 22 nanofarad to charge up or in other words, it charges up in approximately 1 60th of a second to 5 volts.